Hi, um, today is October 8, 2011. My name is James Leone, and what I'm doing is presenting an alternative answer as to who uh, the father of Obadiah Johnson, who was born October 1829 in Tennessee, as reported on his death certificate, and died January 1st, 1912 in Paducah in McCracken County, Kentucky, and is buried at the Shepherd Cemetery they did a presentation for. And was the father of seven children by his wife, Nancy Ellen Shepherd, the daughter of Thomas Shepherd and Mary Polly Jones. Now, the problem that we have with Obadiah <coughs> is, is twofold. The first is that on his death certificate, he, um, the father is listed as don't know, and the mother is listed just with the last name Shepherd, which is not impossible, but well, could be a mistake because that was the last name of his wife. Um, the earliest, um, the earliest census record that I that I see him in. And I'm able to follow them all the way through to um, the 1910 census, I believe. I think I ended up actually finding them. You're living with the Shears um, as a border, saying he's divorced. Um, but the earliest one, because we're going to try to work backwards, it's going to be the, the point of this to try to figure out who his, who his father is. It's not 1880, but 1870 when he is the father of Henry, John, and Edward, at least as shown here. Um, gives you a rough idea. They probably, just by this, they probably married before 1864, but in fact he married in 1861. Um, anyway, nonetheless, I don't think I have his death record right handy right here. Just to show, but... Basically, and what they all say is they have different incant. All the children have different ways of saying who their dad is, right? But it doesn't really ask on these death certificates to say, well, where was your dad born, right? Um, let's just take a look here, I guess. Um, ask where he was born. This is for, this one happens to be for John Daniel, second child. I'm pretty happy with the way I have this set up. And sometimes when I have to get additional evidence, I, I put in the additional evidence that I, that I found. Um, and basically, on Joe Anderson Johnson, it says, well, my dad was Obe Johnson, born in Tennessee. But that's it, Tennessee's a big place, so... Um, but the story is consistently throughout all these censuses. I guess I should do that instead of flipping pages and wasting time. Is that he's always said that he was from Tennessee um, <clears throat> throughout all the different censuses that he that he's asked. So we just looked at 1910. Of course, run back and forth. There is Tennessee. I got them intermixed, unfortunately. So. I'm going to be as quick as we'd like. And here he is, again, the birthplace of Tennessee with an odd spelling for it, but nonetheless, there it is. Farmer. And he says, Tennessee, Tennessee, all the way back the last two generations. And I guess this is as much as he knows. So from his perception, he was born in Tennessee. And um, pretty much that. I don't think I have an unknown... I don't think I've made an ancestry chart for, for the father who I think it is, but that, that's kind of besides the point. So the earliest I'm able to get to really identify him solely, solidly with people that I know he was with and things of that nature really is in the 1870 census. And let's just get to it's this one right here. He's living in McCracken County with wife Nancy that he was known and three children that he's known to be the father of and buried in the same cemetery yard 
along with. The question is, where was he in 1860 and 1850? And I don't think, and it's really been satisfactor satisfactorily been answered um, amongst the group of people that I've seen put up family trees and whatnot. Now, amongst the group of people I've seen put up family trees, they assert that the father of Obadiah Johnson was a man named Thomas Johnson. And I'll go into that. Um, I guess what I'm going to try to do now is try to piggyback into Ancestry and show that really quickly. And the easiest way for me to do that is to go through Monroe Lewis <laughs> from Family Tree Maker and then go <laughs> and then take the roundabout trip. So let me go through the story here. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to outline what I'm going to do at least as far as the research that I've done from my end uh, to try to answer this question because I'm I'm finding the evidence that I'm looking at for the assertion that his father was actually Thomas Johnson to be evidence against that idea. Um, I've looked at the 1860 and 1850 census for Thomas Johnson who was living in Kentucky and there is no Obadiah in either of them, and I expect at least on the youngest one, as with uh, Randolph Lewis and his son Monroe Lewis, at least on the, the first youngest census, uh, when, when Obadiah was the youngest in this case, um, from De Peer was a father, I, I'm not seeing that yet so far with Thomas Johnson. Okay, so where do we have, or did they remove that story about Monroe? And you know, the subtlety of the spilling is what's going to make a difference whether I find this easily or not. If I have it as Monroe instead of Monroe, O versus U, I think it's going to come up. So, to answer the question, as far as I know, Obadiah wasn't a member of the household of this Thomas Johnson. They're saying that he was a member of. Oh, boy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to jump on the bandwagon here quickly. I wanted to look at those census records they have up there to show you up on screen. I might be able to get there from Joe Johnson. But maybe the person's taking their stuff down? I hope not. I'm not here to, you know, Yeah, I'm here just to try to find answers. So, I mean, any effort that's been done so far is appreciated, appreciated no matter what. Um, I'm not always going to have the right answer. Someone's going to come and have a better answer. Um, I, I'm going to say right now that my... Really, the suggestion I'm going to make is not a final answer. Neither is with, you know... The, a little bit of doubt that I have about the Stearns family doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means I the evidence we have I don't know, right? Um, it's just not happening, so I guess I'll look here. I hope not, because that would really suck. I mean, it, it's worse thing. Everybody's worth, worth, work is worth um, what they do. Yeah, you know. Maybe I'll start over again. Now here it is. Good. All right. Now I wanted to show overall this Johnson family tree. The person is, you know, that has set up, I guess, Brenda Johnson has done a tremendous lot of amount of work. I've referred to her tree a great many times. It's by no means anything that I'm doing here has any intention in any way, shape, or form as anything other than just really praise for what she's done. She's done a lot of work and set a lot of groundwork that, you know, 
would have been very hard for me to accomplish without this basic framework to start with. So any conclusions I draw is on the backbone of some of the physical work that she's done. Okay, so I'm working my way back here. Here's Obadiah. There's this plot. It's a, it's a plain plot. I don't know if this photo was obtained from Find the Grave or she got it on her own, but it really doesn't matter that much. And I'll also get into the Sally Justice thing, too, uh, but mm, at a different time. So it's saying that the, the father is Thomas Johnson, born 1798, died in McCracken County, 1861, and he came out of the St. Martin's Parish of Louisa County, Virginia. And I'm a little more familiar with the counties now that I've gone to the Lewises. But when I look, remember, when you look at Obadiah's census records, we don't find him in 1860 or 70, which is what this whole next exercise is going to be about. So here he is um, living in Paducah, uh, 1860, and we've got four kids. Now, mind you, Obadiah was born, uh, for argument's sake, 1830. So he would have been 30 here. He did get married. He didn't get married, as far as I know, until 1861, August 9th. So it's arguable as to whether he still would be in the household age 30. You know, it's not really going to. It's not too convincing. Now let's look at this other Thomas here in 1850. And we can see him again. He's still in the Kraken County in 1850, but now in 1850, and at that time, Obadiah would have been a 20-year-old man. I guess arguably he'd be out of the uh, out of the household, but <coughs> you know that's that's it. Now let's just take a look at this census record and let's see if he's Thomas maybe has a neighbor Obadiah anywhere. Or, you know, is he showing up anywhere? Um, Don't see it, right? He's not a member of the household. Again, at 20, he probably could have been out of the household. Where is he? Um, like to know that. Now, the other thing that would support what is being said here, I'm going to go back to the page before that just to see if the Obadiah shows up as a neighbor. Now, why am I looking for neighbors? Is in the Shepherd family where Thomas Shepard had just daughters, and all of his daughters married, and it ended up, as time went by, Thomas Shepard gave away his land to his daughters, either before or at, at their marriage, including Obadiah Johnson, by the way. And his they all ended up being neighbors because it was one farm that was divided up, and that's why neighbors are important. In some cases, is evidence to give you <coughs> an idea of what's going on, and I'm still looking here. I'm not seeing that kind of activity happen. Now, I haven't looked into Thomas, this Thomas Johnson's life enough to say, ah, well, I know this child had got this farm, and this child got that farm, and this child got that farm, and therefore, since he's not there, I know for sure. This is just a bit of evidence that weighs against it again. Now, uh, let's look at the 1840 census, because actually, I haven't looked at it. Now, again, with the problem with an 1840 census is, when you look at it, you're going to get the name of the head of the household. You're only going to get a date range by which they were living, you know, an age range in which they were born. Um, and by, by mathematics, it'll say is between the age of 30 and 40 on that date, or is between the age, you know, as a male and, you know, so all you get is one name and a bunch of members of the household with different. Um, checked off amounts. Um, am I going to get to I'll go back? I'll get back to her page, and she's got the 1840 census attached here. And let's see if there is a white male that was born uh, that fits in the date range that were 1829 or 30 lies for this 1840 census. By the transcription, let's see, this is in 1840, so he would be in, uh, in the age 10 through 14 range, which there is one, right? And then there's one 5 through 9, so there's two children here, right? And the next census, they would be. Uh, 
20 through 24, but we'll be able to see their names. So we're looking for in the next census, does this Thomas Johnson in his next census, 1850, have a son, assuming they lived, and assuming this the census taker took down the right, was careful about the columns he put the numbers in, and got the right information, and the right information was told to him, assuming that's all correct. Um, an eliminative piece of evidence would be to see the next census, which I don't recall, so <laughs> I'll go over it right now, and to see whether we have two white males, one that's between age 15 and 19, and one uh, that's between age 20 and 24. And if he disappears, well, we're going to look for another Johnson in McCracken County, because he's there in 1840, um, with um, that date range and see if it's it turns out being a, a very odd way to spell Obadiah <laughs> or a mistranscription you know okay so here we are and one that's under five that would place him at 1835 and I'll give credit for that too reason being is that uh, my uh, of all the senses I look over, I come to the conclusion that he may have um, overstated his age by about five years at one point. But that's for the other theory, but I'll give it credit. So we're looking for uh, uh, under 15, uh, uh, 15 through 20, and 20 through 24. Let's go back. Three sons in this 1850 census. Do we have a son? So H E, I'm going to say that's probably going to be a son. Yes, it is. So that would be this five. No, he wouldn't even be alive yet. This David, out of all the children that are listed there, is the only one that remains, and he would have been three in 1840. Let's go back. So the sons that were. 5 through 9 and 10 through 14, in this case, are gone. They're not here anymore, and they were in McCracken County. Well, that, that, that's evidence that weighs towards the, the Obadiah Johnson, the son of this Thomas Johnson. And he's in McCracken County. You know, it all sounds good. It's worth printing this thing out. We get there, file, print. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for other Johnsons in McCracken County. In this case, I'm going to assign birth date ranges. Hopefully, that'll print out soon. All right, did it go to the other printer? I'm going to have to get up and get it anyway, so um, hold tight for a sec. Stare at a preview. <laughs> Let me write it back. This free white male we have identified is very identified. He's not an Obadiah, right? And plus, he would have this guy would have been born anywhere from 1835 to 1840, which is also an eliminated piece of evidence. His next uh, person would have been born anywhere from 1841 to 18. No, <laughs> uh, not that. From anywhere from 1831 through 1835, there's an overlap. And this one would have been born anywhere up to 1830, 1826 to 1830. So this would seem to be Obadiah if that's if that's true. This one would have been age. 15 through 19 in 1850, so he might have been out of the house as well if he was actually up towards the higher end there of, of nine. So now we're going to look at McCracken County in 1850 for Johnson's, basically. Let's go take a look. 
probably should have done this before I did all this other effort. And I'm, if it turns out that I'm not able to eliminate everybody, then this is also, it's a viable theory. Um, and I was going to say that anyway, even if I hadn't gone through this, this whole exercise. Uh, Kentucky, I'll try McCracken. And I'm not going to go so far as say Paducah. We're assuming they would have stayed in the same area. Okay, so we have 23 names and not too bad. Okay, let's figure out. First of all, here's Thomas. And I think Thomas, who he has. This is the same Thomas, as far as I know. He has a, out of all the names on the other page, he's got, there's Thomas, there's Anne, there's David. There's this right here. Sarah, on H. E, who is 1845 born. Alright. The reason, on the reason I'm going through this whole exercise is I don't have the benefit of being able to look at newspapers and obituaries to go, okay, I could look at David's obituary and see if it says he has survived or he was preceded in death by Obadiah. Right? And I don't even know, I might be able to get an obituary for Obadiah maybe at the Kentucky Digital Archives, but I think they don't go as far as 1912, which is unfortunate. May or may not. So let's go back. All right, so we have, okay, so in this, go back to this list, we have our Thomas who's covered, right? Um, okay, so this Henry here, it says he was born about 1815, would be older than any of the people here. <laughs> so he's another possibility, actually, that he is father with a Josephine and a Enoch. Let's see if he's claiming to come out of Tennessee. No. Um, can't really... Nail it down. You know, he's just, you know, he's just a Henry Johnson that was born in 1815, and maybe if I looked at the 1830 census of McCracken, I might be able to fit him in something like this. But he's not. He's not Obadiah, obviously. And okay. So Isaiah is. Probably he, 1816, no, he's too old again, and he's not Obadiah. It's, and I, I don't know, Sam, I'm probably going to look at some of these again. There's yeah, Isaiah. Eleanor, who's the head of a household, seems to be single. I just wonder if any of these children claim to be born in Tennessee. No. No, Illinois. No, okay, so none of them do. I'm just gonna keep going down this list. We have DC, there's so many of them in there. She's married to Mathilda. Ah, here's a man that claims to have been born in Tennessee, and that is about the around the time Obadiah's there. And I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to look at a couple pieces of paper that I set aside. This is what I think my solution is going to be. And I'm not going to reveal the answer yet because I'm going to this whole thing. census that I'm looking at. Oh! Uh, he's about 10 years off, but that 
10 years off what I just found. Okay, so he's, he's claiming Tennessee. This seems to be a little warmer, <laughs> right? Um, is, was, by the way, was Thomas, Thomas Johnson was claiming Virginia. Okay. Um, how many has he got? 23, for God's sakes. Okay, here's Thomas. Now, Anne here is claiming Tennessee. Daughter of a Thomas and a Sally, and the Sallys that they claim is Anne Justice. And there, age 25, is about four years older than Obadiah. That, that's, that's supportive evidence. So this is, in fact, yeah, this is, in fact, the one I was coming forward. Um, very interesting, Tennessee. That, that, that support, that's supportive, okay? Um, I want to know what happened to these other two boys. I found David. There's one that was going to be from born around 1826 to 1830. In fact, why don't I just go down the list instead of wasting time looking at all these? Get back to our list. Anne says Tennessee. William says Tennessee. So this William D.C. Uh, with 1824 is just, he would have been a hair. He's just a hair too. I would expect him to be up here. In fact, there there is one. This maybe this is William D. Okay. And I'm just gonna accept the transcriptions. And then there's a Henry R that as you get older here, I'm looking for 1831 35. Let's see. And really, 1826 to 1835. So Henry, but he's North Carolina. He's not claiming Tennessee, but they don't really have to. He could have only been in Tennessee a couple of years. Um, so, are there other? There's no, notice. There's no Obadiah there, right? Well, if I can find John, uh, Johnsons to explain all the people that are in here, and even though he's been to Tennessee, it doesn't mean it's the same Johnson family. You can see there's a lot of Johnsons here in McCracken anyway. So here's, an eight, here's another David. Why would they have two Davids? I, I don't know, but uh, 3135 is what I'm looking for. So maybe this one would be the son. And in fact... I remember there's one census record I distinctly remember for the shepherds. If I got this right, it says the name was Cooked Goose, and I think it probably should be Cornelius Gross. This is very interesting here. Um, but he would have been in Kentucky, which places uh, Johnson has been in. So if this is the right one, he would have only been there a very short time. Um, Preliminarily, with this David being 1832, I, it's another, see, that's another with Davis Johnson. But still, where is Obadiah? <laughs> right? Where is he? Um, okay, now, now I've, I've had this down to just McCracken County. Now I'm looking for uh, 1826 through 30, near the Henry R. But that's North Carolina. Um, there's Jones. And guess who was from Jones? Guess who was from North Carolina? Mary Polly Jones, who was the mother of Nancy Shepard. But does that mean they're one and the same? Well, this is all, it's all, looks very promising. There, there's nothing to say that, that any of this is incorrect. <coughs> I just can't draw a conclusion. And what the one thing that goes unexplained is there is no Obadiah Johnson in McCracken County in 1850 when he would have been exactly 20 years old. Now, he doesn't have to have stayed in McCracken County. He could have left and come back. So maybe I could expand uh, 
the search that I've done here for uh, McCracken County uh, for, for Johnson's in 1850 and just say, how about Kentucky? No, oh, we have 5,102. So, why don't I say Obadiah? And there is an Obadiah, birth year 1833 at District 1, Owen, Kentucky. Living with the William Johnson. Not a Thomas. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And <coughs> as far as we know, this other Thomas was married to a Sally, not an Elizabeth. And he appears in the same year of uh, census, right? Now, does this mean this is the right one and William is the father? But let's see if anybody else claims to come out of Tennessee. Does Obadiah claim to come out of Tennessee? Does Jonathan, <coughs> does anybody claim to come out of Tennessee? Does William, he claims Georgia, as is the wife. Well, we don't have, it isn't very conclusive. We can see there's, there's 5,000 Johnsons inside Kentucky. We found one, but there's so many Johnsons in the country. Who are we to say that out of 5,000, one isn't going to be an Obadiah, born around the same time as ours, but how do we know? We still don't know it's the same. The name is so common, right? So, <coughs> we're going to use, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, um, like I'm saying, I'm not eliminating the idea that Obadiah, I'm not saying that it's false, that Obadiah was in fact not the son of Thomas Johnson. I'm saying I don't have any evidence to support it. I have some evidence to contradict that, but it's not very strong. I have some supportive evidence, but it's it's elusive. It doesn't really round it up. Is that the same Jones family? Is that the same uh, <laughs> family of Gooch or you know, Grossman, or I forgot the name, but so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I know that the 1850 and 1860 census, in theory, lists the name of every single individual living in this country, both 1850 and 1860, and that would include Obadiah Johnson. <coughs> and what do I know about this Obadiah Johnson? Uh, does he appear in earlier censuses? Does he appear in later censuses? Um, well, we can take a look a little bit here and kind of go through the exercise that I'm going to go through. So here's this William Johnson here in 1850 from Georgia. This Obadiah is 17. So he may be out of the household by 1860, but he may not. So perhaps this one they're suggesting here will end up being a man born in Georgia living in Kentucky. Now it's Owen County, and I'm not sure how far that is from the Kraken. Indeed, he still is living in Owen, in uh, Owen County. We got a William, we got Elizabeth, we got Jonathan. Now we got an Owen, age seventeen. So that Obadiah would have moved out. Well, let's see if they have any suggestions for our Obadiah here that was born in Kentucky, eighteen thirty-three. So let's look at eighteen sixty. And they're suggesting this. And this man, who lives in Owen County, Kentucky, actually has a wife named Mary, not Nancy, as we have, as we don't have yet, <laughs> um, with a Jeremiah, Daniel, and Annie, and WH. And so they're going to suggest an 1870 for us. We're going to get lucky here in Owen County. Gratz, Owen County, there he is, Mary, Jeremiah, Daniel. Okay, so this is not the same Obadiah. So we don't have, we, we haven't even found an Obadiah 
in either 1850 or 60 in the state of Kentucky. He claims he's born in Tennessee, and although there is another Thomas Johnson that had a few children that were born in Tennessee, living in McCracken County, that seems to indicate that they're the same family, and has children <coughs> of him living with people that have names that are similar to other names that appear in a spousal relationship. It's all just kind of, we're not so sure. So, unless there's any other kind of evidence, like a obituary for Obadiah that says, hey, father's name is Thomas, or a local history book, which I haven't really seen, I think if there is a local history of McCracken County that was published around in the middle of the 1800s, not recently, um, then, yeah. Yeah, that might point to an answer. Fortunately, I don't have access to the Kraken Library. I'm way, way far away. And I have other means to, to approach the problem. So, getting back to the point I was making. With this one example, with this Obadiah Johnson that lived in Owen County, um, I know that pretty much we have censuses that are pretty much complete with some exceptions, that includes a lot of the time, unfortunately, African Americans, and, and, and we'll see that. But um, as far as, for all we know, he's a white man, and it's, unfortunately that kind of bigotry was happening, but it plays into what the evidence will be. Um, <coughs> I'm going to assume that it's a good assumption, it's good to assume for the most part that the person you're looking for it's a pretty safe assumption that the person you're looking for is in, is going to appear in every single census. And in this case, it's going to be 1815, 1860. So we're looking for an Obadiah Johnson somewhere in the country that arrived, really arrived in McCracken County around the far, or Kentucky at least. You know, were, they, were they married at McCracken County? Um, yeah, they were married in McCracken. So he arrived in McCracken County just after 1860. He's not there in 1860, but he arrives just after. The census is taken, or maybe in 1861 is when he arrives, but he's in other states before that, the evidence that I can see. Or he, unlike a lot of other people, refused to take the census, but we'll see how likely that is, because the exercise I'm going to go through, and I'm already gathered the data so you don't need to watch over that <coughs> and watch me labor through that process is to get a list of uh, get the census records for every Obadiah Johnson that appears in the 1850 census and the 1860 census see if I can connect any of the Obadiah Johnsons between the two and if I can see if I can carry him forward 1870 and like this Obadiah Johnson here that lives in Owen County if um, that carry forward of a continuous family does doesn't end up, at, <laughs> in fact, I know it doesn't because it's not the way it worked out in McCracken County with Obadiah Johnson and his wife Nancy Shepard. Then I know it's not him. I know it's not the man. I'm looking. If it does, if I can have a continuity between all three senses, 50, 60, 70, I can eliminate them. Then I can look at other factors. I could, well, this man was born in this at this time, and so that would make him this age when he married, being the father of seven children at that age, and finally dying at this age. How likely is that? Where this Obadiah Johnson came from over here, and he had to travel this far, or this Obadiah Johnson was married. Yeah, so I'm going to go through all that. So I have a, a packet of 39... Uh, either pairings or sing singly appearing Obadiah Johnsons that span the 1850 through as late as 1880 censuses in this pile that I have right here. <laughs> and I'm going to discuss them all <laughs> on this little presentation I've done. Now they've turned the Arctic freeze back on. But, um, I've had a little bit of heat, so <laughs> this air conditioning here is horrible. Feels like I'm, it really feels like I'm standing in front of a, a um, supermarket 
the frozen food section. Thermometer says 68. I don't believe it. Okay, so let's go through this list. The, the intent is to find a primary candidate that would, that would end up traveling from somewhere else and end up in McCracken County in 1870 and to eliminate other possibilities. And the way I'm going to do it, uh, before I end that, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have a list of Obadiah Johnsons that are not impossible. <laughs> then from the not impossible Obadiah Johnsons, I'm going to look at them and kind of rank them by, by their factors of likeliness. I have, I have a I've actually already done all this. I, I got a little spreadsheet over there, so. Um, so, let's go for the first one. Here is a man that's born in 1773. We're just going to keep in mind the stats that we know about Obadiah. And he was married. And he was from Rhode Island. And he is a part, and he's been, they, someone did a biography for him. There he is being born in Rhode Island, and he disappears after 1850. This excerpt of the bio bio biography for this person doesn't say when he died, but I'll almost guarantee you he didn't die in 1912, so I've marked him off as being no too old. So there's only one pair, and... <clears throat> Without any additional information, my assumption is he died between 1850 and 1860. And he was 77 in 1850. <laughs> it's probably a fair assumption. It's probably a reasonable thing to just you know, scratch him off as not being the right one. Now, <clears throat> that's not to say that some of these individuals could actually end up being the grandparent of the Obadiah that we're interested in. I'll get to that. So, but I'm not going to make that point here, and I haven't made that determination yet. <clears throat> okay, so here's a man, 1775. He is living in Tennessee, and that's in Greene County. So, a wife named Rosanna and a daughter named Anna, and this is 1850. He disappears after this, and I marked him off as being too old. He did. He probably did die between 1850 and 1860. So, also, I'm hoping. Uh, now, one other point before I get to that. Um, no, I'll get to that point first. I'm hoping that this also could be a comprehensive... If anybody is doing research on Obadiah Johnson anyway, anywhere, for any American, um, and they're stuck at 1870 like I am, or even not, even not so, I'm going to go over all of them. So if, if you have an Obadiah Johnson that lived between 1850 and 1870, I'm going to cover him here. John's son. I don't think there were any Obadiah John Stuns anyway, so um, I probably determined that. I probably wouldn't skip over that. Okay, so this video might be for you just to see their census record and know where they lived. Maybe I'll be able to demonstrate a, a move that you didn't know about, so you'll be able to work back even further, you know, or show why I know it's the same family, etc. Okay, to move on. And then the other point I was going to make is the indexing. There's a number of ways these Obadiahs end up getting spelled. I had to do a number of qu like queries, and some creative spellings came up later, and then I was able to follow through with that spelling and find other records to match up these follow-throughs that will come up later. There's Obadiah. Obadiah. Ob you know, that's consistent in this case. Obadiah, with an E. Abadiah. <laughs> You'll see more, and so keep that in mind. So I, I had to search uniquely for all. I had to look for Johnsons in these geographic areas to find these in, in some cases, because I knew they were there before or later. So I look back, are they there? Oh, there they are. He's Abadiah instead. So, okay. <clears throat> okay, this is number three. And he's a resident of New Hampshire, 73. I think he's too old. But in 1870, actually, and it, oh yeah, this is this one's very unique. This one has a man that was 
age 73 and even 50, born in 1777, and uh, Pittsfield, Merrimack, New Hampshire. Then uh, the census man came out, I think, in 1860. Maybe that's why I'm confused. And found out that in, Feb in February of 1860, this Obadiah Johnson of Pittsfield, Merrimack, New Hampshire, died. At least he lists him as that. He's dead, but he rises from the dead because in 1870, <laughs> not in Pittsfield, but instead in Newbury, <clears throat> he's living. And so I. This one has a Betsy is alive, and this has a Zilpha. I, I assume they're the same Obadiah. It could be two different ones. That would make it 40 Obadiah Johnsons during this period. Otherwise, the this is this is wrong. Someone said the guy was dead. <laughs> he wasn't dead. He was still living. <laughs> it's of Merrimack County, New Hampshire. Next Obadiah. This man was born in 1787, um, says in Massachusetts, but living in Vermont with a wife Mary, whole family with him. Um, I've written him off as, as too old again until I get a birth date, first birth date of 1812. It's almost as even worth looking at, but uh, if I say 18, even 1802, to be generous. <laughs> to give these people a uh, 110 year lifespan. They were, were close to the Giz Book World Records. Um, but I've written them off as Chul. He, he's, you know, 1912. That, you know, five more years, I would have said, okay. <clears throat> Next over Johnson's from Oswego County, New York. Too old, birth date 1788, white thieve. And. He's still living in 1860, and he's in <coughs> Connecticut. Next over there, Johnson. He is from New Hampshire. He's from Merrimack, New Hampshire, probably relation to the other one. But he's still too old. He's born 1795 by this. 1860 gives him about the same record. Got a son, Moses. We know we're talking about the same family. Merrimack, New Hampshire, he's just too old to be, to have gone, decided to up and leave his, his life in New Hampshire and travel, just happened to travel to McCracken, Kentucky and get married a year later at age 64 and have seven children and die in 1912. It's just, no. This Obadiah Johnson is too old. He's from, a, 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 I think it's supposed to be Ostego County, but they got Otsego. I think it was Ostego. If I'm not right, you can lecture me. <clears throat> and this is born from Connecticut, certainly not Tennessee, but again, too old. Next one, and I don't see him in, I don't see him in 1860. This one in 1860 could be the same man if he moved. Nothing to indicate that he is. The um, 52 to 68 would be a 16, he would have aged 16 years and two cents. I kept them apart, but they're still too old anyway. Now we're starting to get to the close ones, and I said, well, okay, they could have got this wrong. They could be estimating his age and 1803, 1805. Okay, let's, let's put him into the realm of possible Obadiah. So I did, and he's number one on the ones I have, and this one is near impossible, <laughs> but I'm still keeping it as possible. You see how I'm doing it? I'm getting a half shades of gray. He's going to get end up being eliminated as almost impossible, but nonetheless. So here he is, and he is living in some very large establishment in Detroit, Michigan, at the age of 47 with a wife age 39, who, if I remember right, claims her nativity from Canada while he claims Vermont. By 1860, he's still in Detroit County, uh, Wayne County, New York, Detroit, uh, Michigan, New York. Blech. 
if he's still with a wife, Grace. Appears that he has same children, Norman Franklin and Evelyn. Well, Norman Franklin, I don't know about Evelyn. Uh, living with him. I can't follow him any forward than that. That's the only reason why he remains a possible Obadiah. But he's about an age he could have died. I mean, it could be explained that he probably died. I just couldn't find any further information about him anywhere. Um, they could have gone back to Canada. I, um, I could try looking forward for see if Norman or Franklin Johnson have or Anilla Johnson, but you know, by 1870, Anilla Johnson's going to be probably married out of the household. No, there's no reason for anybody to stay in this household. Um, now, sometimes older parents end up living with one of their children, you know, but as so far as the work that I've done, and again, the guy's born 1804, roughly, and it's consistent, so they have to be consistently wrong with his age. Um, by by a couple of years, even for it to be within the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> so I've been very generous here. I mean, I mean that would be 110 years old at death. It's just crazy. Now here's uh, Obadiah Johnson. <clears throat> Again, he's in he's in Tennessee, uh, but he's claiming a birthplace of North Carolina. He again would be over. He'd be 109 years old. At his death in McCracken County, if if indeed this is the same one, and he would have had to, because I see him in the 1860 census, married and with children living in his household, one as young as 10, um, he would have had to just say, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, up and left, and decided to leave Madison, Tennessee, and go on down to McCracken and get married uh, a year later with his 10-year-old and 12-year-old son there. Um, but the thing is that I was actually able to follow him forward, and that is actually, he appears in 1880, uh, living in, I don't know who Nedham is, but it looks like he's living with his daughter. Perhaps, but I followed him forward, so he's living in 1880, and still in Madison, Tennessee, so <clears throat> he's certainly not living in McCracken County when I find him with his wife, Nancy. Also, someone had gone to the trouble of following this person's life and identifying who, where he came from and whose children were and all that. It's just another nail in the coffin to say this is probably not the right Obadiah Johnson. This next one that I selected is possible. I don't think I selected this past one. Yeah, I eliminated this one as not being... Uh, no, no, I picked him as possible, but when I looked further, I found that. And he's off my mind as even being close to possible. Another one, 1805. Again, he would have been 107 when he died. We would have... Either this has to be wrong, or that he's black, or... Uh, he was actually black, and no one ever noticed to say anything about it in his death certificate or two sentences that were taken. Um, this is unbelievable but possible. He could have left his wife Marguerite in 1850. Uh, the census loses track of him in 1860. And um, if this is him, then he would have ended up in McCracken County having left his um, I don't know. I mean, this to me it could have been this Obadiah had died by 1860, or they just didn't count him in the 1860 census, which is very unfortunate. The big tree I was talking about. I've seen a lot of that. This is not the first African American record I've come across. And I'll tell you, just to pause, anybody that is accomplished at, at African American genealogy, I have, I have a hell of a lot of respect for them. It, it is very, very tough to do. I've done a very small portion of it. Um, when I was working on the Chichester genealogy, and I was, I was trying to, to trace all the Chichesters, not just certain portions. The names Chichester, they're getting traced, as far as I'm concerned. And so, if I ever release that book, it's going to be in there. But there's a lot of fragments, and so you have to be willing to accept jumps. Uh, same husband, same wife, but now we're 1850, now we're 1870, you know, things of that nature. Um, 
Okay, so let's get back to this. Now we have another Obadiah Johnson. Uh, this I also selected as unbelievable but possible. This he would have been 100 years old at his death if this date is right. Um, or 101 if that's right. And he had a <clears throat> wife named Anne uh, and daughter Sarah Oliver. Uh, daughter Sarah and son Oliver. And then they moved to um, Lapeer County, Michigan from Wayne County, New York. You can see it's the same family, Obadiah, Anne, Sarah, and Oliver, and a few other children that are added to this. That's in 1860, and I don't see an 1870 census. So in this case, he would have had to, this Obadiah Johnson either A, died, uh, or B, um, I just didn't find him, or C, if he is our Obadiah, he would have had to have left this family, including a two-year-old son, Got on his horse, decided to ride down, ride down to Kentucky, and get married in 1861. How likely is that? <laughs> Not very likely. That's going to be that's my point. So so far we've gone through all of these, and they're all just kind of like, what? How is that possible? Um, this next Obadiah Johnson was born 1808. So again. He would be 104 years old if this is right. Uh, it's indexed as Justin, but it, that's wrong. It's actually Johnson. I can tell by uh, additional. There's an Obid now for our <laughs> for your indexing pleasure, and he is living still in North Carolina in 1870. So because he's living in North Carolina and not in Kentucky in 1870, we know that's not him. Next one is can be a little more complete than that. And this one's from 1850, and he's living in Tioga County, New York, and he's got a wife named presumably a wife named Clarissa. Probably maybe born Clarissa Moss in 1860, maybe he's still there in Tioga County, Candor. And 1880 he's still there. Tiger County, Canada, with wife Clarissa. It's not him, because our Obadiah was living in McCracken County. Next, this man would have been 101 if he, when he died, if he's our Obadiah. Let's get all the ooze together. <coughs> he's got a wife named Abigail, from Massachusetts. And he is... Still there in 1860. Still there with Abigail in 1870. And still there with Abigail in 1880. And probably died between 1880 and 1900. But that's beating a <laughs> beating a dead horse with a stick. We, he's, that's not him. Okay, he's okay. Here's another one that's in Louisiana and the Rapides, Louisiana. And this one was hard to sort out because of all the different <coughs> ways the name ended up being spelling, spelled. He would have been 99 years old when he died, for one, but for two, he's living here in 1870. It's not even possible. So he's got a wife named Rutha at first, a son named Gibson, if that's right, Matilda. Nancy, uh, here's a Gideon, age three. That's the that's the fulcrum point. Uh, is that fifty? Yes. Okay. So then, by the next census, well, Gideon only ages seven years, but that could be a transcription error. Still living there in Rapides County, a different wife, Lucy, but she decided to change her name back to Ruta in 1870. Still the same set, yes, and still living in Rapides County. And since he's there in 1870, he's not our Obadiah. Let's go to the next one. We're at number Q now, and I've gotten to an additional set that gets up to M. Isn't that great? <laughs> okay, so now we have <coughs> Obadiah Johnson. He's black, so we got the black factor in there that our Obadiah was never really identified as being black, so chance gets more remote with that factor. He's married to Julianne. He's living in Pennsylvania with daughter Emily and son Louis. Um, in 1870, having aged exactly 20 years, being in the same county, but it looks like he's got either a different 
the named wife for that. Juliana is a really horrible mistranscription. And I don't even see the Emily or Lewis there. This could be a second Obadiah, but certainly he's old. Certainly he is, you know, a uh, different, different race. Uh, it's I, I've counted this as being the same man using the primary factor of his age, having age 20 years, and both Lewis and Emily would have been out of the house by 1870. I wish I could find an 1860, but unfortunately I can't. And in this case, they don't indicate what the race is, but if you look at the face of the page, that was another eliminating factor, that his age was the same and his race was the same. He is, yes, B for black. So it's not him if he's living the, he's living in Pennsylvania in 1870. He's not living in McCracken in 1870. Get it, got it, good. Okay, here's the next one. This guy lived in Mexico, the city of Mexico, in Oswego County, New York. Wife Lydia in 1850. Still living with Lydia in 1860. Still in Oswego, but now they're calling it Parish. And still wife Lydia. Lydia is the common factor here, still in Parish Oswego in 1870. That's not him. Okay, so again, remember, count, we had 39 we're going through. Basically, I'll get down to Z, then I'll go I, A, I, B, and through I, M. We'll have all of our different ones, and I'll go back over the ones that I said were within possibility, but as you can see so far, through all the ones we've gone so far, they're either near impossible or not him. Now, here is one that looked promising for a little while, but ended up, I found a later record of him, so it isn't him. So here he is in 1815, Massachusetts, and uh, born in Massachusetts, but living in Missouri, wife Clarissa, uh, son Granville. 1860, we got the Granville, Clarissa, Obadiah, still in the same county. I didn't find, yeah, I did. I actually did find his 1870 eventually. And. Henrietta here was nine, now she's nineteen, got the same Massachusetts, it's not him. <laughs> Gone. Next Obadiah was living in America, Barnwell County, South Carolina, and the only record I have of him was from 1850. I listed him as possible. Um, there were some of all the other records that would come up. There was one Obadiah Johnson about this age that was was Canadian. Uh, seemed to have a presence in Canada in 1860. This one has him being a carpenter. Um, again, the factor is he would have been 91 when he died, and he would have been 40 if this is the same Obadiah Johnson when he married. Um, but he's saying South Carolina, as his, you know, he's, he claims South Carolina as his birthplace, but later Obadiah say Tennessee. It's possible if he moved from there to Tennessee. He's, it's not a dead horse, but it's not looking too hot. Uh, the ancillary evidence I found seemed to point that this is, was a Canadian, but I can't be sure. That one's number T, so we're almost at the end of this alphabet. We got number U. Obadiah Johnson, birthplace Georgia. I think we've already gone over this, but um, he has a wife, Epsira. Maybe, maybe not. He's living in Alabama, 1815, 1860. Now she's calling herself Omira, but you can see the George W and the James N and the Mary E and the Asa, that should be Asa, not Ala S. They're still in his household in 1960. By 1870, he's living in Wynn County, Louisiana, with his wife, Elmira. Claims birthplace of Georgia. That's, and the birth, the, the year he's claiming as his birth is consistent throughout. So, slight possibility I didn't get the, the move right, but there's a I bet you that is a John George 
instead of a George W. And is there James? Was there Francis? There's Francis. There's Joseph, and there's Zachariah. They're calling Zachariah. Yeah, same guy. There's no way this is not the, this is not our Obadiah. Now number V. This one is living in 1850 in Johnson County, Illinois, claiming a birth in Kentucky. So let's see. Well, this looks kind of hot. Um, it's got a wife named Nancy, but in 1860, he's still in Johnson County, and in 1870, he's still in Johnson County. And the wife is not no longer Nancy in 1870. He's Florilla. Yes, I do understand that, but we have um, is there any real strong carry forward. Here's a Martha. Would have been 12. She may have died. I don't know. This one. He's still in Johnson County, you see. Township 13, Township 12. You know, very, very close range 3. I mean, seems to me this man got remarried. Um, his first wife died. That, this one, I counted as, as living there. I guess you can say it's remote. Uh, remote possibility, but that's... Uh, it's probably better than some of those 1800s I picked out. It's impossible, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so here's a man that was born in New Island, claims born in New Hampshire, uh, living in Rhode Island, and has a wife named Elizabeth. And then he goes to Iowa <laughs> with Elizabeth. But now he's saying he's born in Massachusetts. But I know he is in Iowa in 1860 with Elizabeth. It's Johnson County, Iowa now. Then Eliza now. But now he's back in New Hampshire. Annie is 11 now. She was one back then. Same couple. So they, they left. They didn't stay in Iowa. They went back. Now he's saying he's born in New Hampshire, but he's living in Rhode Island. Before he was saying, well, New Hampshire, I guess. And still with Elizabeth and Annie now, 20 in 1880, beating the horse with a stick. We still have our Elizabeth. We still have a Massachusetts. We still have in Providence, Rhode Island. And we have even a death record in 1908, 82 years. This is not our Obadiah. Next one is going to be number X. Born Georgia, son of a David and Mary. Now, this is about the right age. What he's saying, he's saying 1829, almost throughout all the records that, that come up. Still in Georgia, this is Coffee County. This was Appling. This is a Obadiah who's yet to be married. Now he's married with the Drusella in 1860 with a bunch of kids, and he probably got married around 1851. And still with Drusella in 1870 with all these, God, a lot of children in the household in Coffee County. He's there, same time our Obadiah is. It's not our Obadiah. Number Y. Is a man living in Fulton County with a Polly. Born at about the right time, but New York instead of Tennessee. Still in Oppenheim, Fulton County, but looks like Polly is short for Catherine or his first wife. Died. This only has a four year span, that has a nine year span. So his first wife probably died. By 1870, still with Catherine, still in Fulton County. Instead of Oppenheim, he's in Stratford. Um, don't know if there's any difference, actually. I don't know if the sense takers, how accurate they were with their locations. Next one, this one I had as possible. Uh, this one's number Z, so we're moving along. He was from Genesee County, New York. Living with the Burgess family, then he disappears. Now, there is some background information about him. There was a local biography of Genesee County published, and the Johnson family that did live in, of an earlier generation that lived in um, Genesee County came out of Berkshire County, Massachusetts. 
and Obadiah there is one of his children. Um, eventually, I guess they died out or moved elsewhere, but um, this so see, you see this is possible, but we got have someone that was born in New York. And again, this is 1828. It's about the age of Obadiah. The closest, in fact, it's going to come to most of his records. Or one of the closest. Yeah, yeah actually the closest. But he disappears now. It's conceivable. Before 1861, he could have shown up in McCracken, Kentucky. But why he would claim Tennessee consistently in all of his senses, and the New York with this, is just not indicative that it's the same person. Okay, so this is my number A of the next set in the alphabet that goes down to M. I got a lot about this guy. So I'm going to eliminate him. This is a man that born in Massachusetts, lived in Massachusetts, was living with the Monk family in 1850. By 1860s, out of the house, living with Julia. And here he was 20, probably a, maybe a higher hand. And I don't even know, was there Julia Monk living there? Yeah, that's just for splits and giggles, but no. And then there he is still in Sharon, Norfolk, Massachusetts. But he had, by that time, had married Julia. Then he moves to Worcester County, but he's still married to Julia, and he still has his son, which is Elmo, not Elmon. And 1870, it's not you know, it's not our Obadiah. There he is, and even in 1880, still living in Worcester, Massachusetts, still with a wife, Julia. He apparently fought in the Civil War. And someone who's studying his family tree has noticed that. Not him. The next one is number B. And this is the one that we went over earlier that was living in um, Owen County, Kentucky, that looked, looked hot, you know, son of a William. But as we can see, he's still living in Owen County, married to a Mary. And he continues to live in Owen County. Finally, he goes to Henry, you know, Henry County, Kentucky. And he has nowhere in there is any indication of anything about Tennessee. Okay, now here's the one that I thought was is actually it. There's a Robert and Lucinda Johnson, and they are at Maury County, Tennessee, so they well could be related to the other count of the other family that was in Maury, Tennessee. And he has a birth date though that's five years older. And now I think this Obadiah John, because there's no, this, either this Obadiah Johnson that's in Ballard County, Kentucky, living with the Thomasons, is on its own. So a 22-year-old man was not caught by either the 1850 or 1870 census, or he is our Obadiah. <laughs> so I think what happened was this: he was living in Tennessee, he's a young, so 16-year-old, uh, with Robert and Lucinda, who I think are Mar Obadiah Johnson's parents, and then he moved out of the house and worked as a hired hand with, uh, but in Kentucky, in Ballard County, at, at Blandville, uh, for a little while. And then, in the matter of a year, he had met the Shepherd family somehow, and went on to move to McCracken County, and, uh, get married in McCracken County in 1861. I'd be very interested to know if any of the neighbors of this family here, where George Thomason is, happens to be a shepherd, but I don't see an indication of it. So this is my leading candidate, actually. This next one I have as possible, uh, Obadiah Johnson. Uh, he's number D. He's here, but he's in Pennsylvania. He is... Son of a Winchell Johnson, doesn't no indication of what race he is. 
Uh, he's in the city of Ulysses in Potter, Pennsylvania. His wife continues to live there. Winchell continues to live there. Or I guess his mom and dad continue to live there, but he's gone. This is possible. Um, and I guess, yes, Jane is white, so by extension, he would be white. But uh, the difference being that he's not claiming Pennsylvania. Now we're getting too young. We're not too young yet, but now he would have had to overstate his age by seven years if this were the same Obadiah. There's no, there's no consideration. You know, he wouldn't have a family to abandon. Um, but his age here being 14, let's see if this is written down messily. No, it's clearly written 14, but there's really nothing here to indicate anything about Tennessee at all. Just keep that in mind. Now here's number E that came out of Goochland, Virginia. What a quinky dink. And I think I've, yes, I've eliminated this guy. So he's the son of an Anderson Johnson, if I get this right, living in Goochland, Virginia. Now, again, we're, he's about six years older than ever reported by Obadiah Johnson later. But that doesn't eliminate my leading candidate. And there he still is living with Anderson and Nancy. Still in Goochland in 1860 and 1880. He's in Fluvanna, which is close. My wife Mary. So let's see, do we have any indications of a Mary living with him? No. But he would have been 35 in 1870. I just haven't found that census yet. Someone has done a family tree for, for this Obadiah. They think they've got this figured out. Here's the obituary for Obadiah Johnson Jr., actually. So, um, died in Roanoke, Virginia. So he's accounted for no mention of a family at all. And he's always been in Virginia. I count this as, as eliminated. This one I counted as possible, because basically we have an 1850 census, Obadiah living in Brooklyn, and then he just disappears after 1850. Conceivably, he could have come over to Kentucky by 1860 and got married, but how he has anything to do with Tennessee, I don't know. Next one, the only one that I found so far, all this that has anything to do with Tennessee or being born in Tennessee is the one candidate that I have. The next Obadiah, um, and I've eliminated him. Quite a bit of information about him. Now, now we're getting older, right? <laughs> so now I, I have these in uh, birth date order. So, you know, so I started with men that were born in the 1770s and worked my way forward. Now I'm in 1839. So now, if it's this one, he would have been 21 years old when he married. So now we have to factor in, well, did he, he is in, in fact, also in Maury County, Tennessee. He's um, older. He may, he may as well just be a cousin of the R. Obadiah, uh, son of a John and Sally Johnson. By 1860, I have him in Jasper, Missouri. Now, instead of being in Ballard County, Kentucky, our Obadiah could have, this could be our Obadiah here. It's about the same age. Well, he's 10 years older here, which is an eliminating factor. But he does claim a birthplace of Tennessee. But we're getting a clear picture now. Not a lot of people are claiming Tennessee that are Obadiahs. <laughs> this is one of them but he's living in Jackson, Jasper County, Missouri, and here he is, a hired hand. Yes, this could be our Obadiah, but, but, uh, here we have age 11. There's 21. That explains Tennessee. He gets married in Tennessee to a Francis in, in uh, 1868. We don't have a Francis in our records. We have a Nancy Shepard, the only one that we know of. And the marriage to Nancy Shepard took place in 1861, seven years prior. Never does a Francis ever appear. It's also another eliminated 
factor. Then back in Obadiah with his Francis, um, back in Murray County, here he is living with her in 1880, so it's not our Obadiah. And he's actually buried in what's called the Brook Cemetery. So he's eliminated. The only thing that I can't really prove that cleanly is that he is the same, you know, if they got the year, if they got his age wrong by 10 years, let's see what the writing looks like. Which household are we in? Spence. That, that writing's a little not so hot, but they've interpreted it as 11. Uh, it could be another age. It could be he was 21. It could, that could be a Obadiah living there in Missouri instead of in Ballard County. At the end of the day, this Obadiah, by all indications, this man was born in 1839. And if he did go to Missouri, he went back to Tennessee. So I, I've eliminated him. Next, Obadiah. And this is another Rapides County, Louisiana. This was actually the son of Obadiah Sr., if I got that right. Now, I followed him quite a ways, and I've eliminated him from even close to possibility. So, the son of a Gibson. He may be a cousin of the other Obadiah. Age 10, so now he'd be 20. Yes, he is. Still living in Rapidy. Still son of a Gibson, 1860. Then he marries... Elizabeth Gibson. Whoa. <laughs> Talk about intermarriage. Okay, so Gibson Johnson, either that's a coincidence or he marries a there it is, 65 and rapid ease. And there she is living with him in 1880. 1910. Oh, although his wife is dead. He's calling himself Obi. There's a Civil War record. Lights are out. Butter's getting hard and the jello's jiggling on that one. Okay, so here's the next one that I still count as possible. This is again in Pennsylvania. Um, this is a Obadiah 19, 1860. Now we're counting 1841. So you would have been 20 instead of 31 when he got married, or 32 when he got married to uh, Nancy Shepard, and um, here's his draft card for the Civil War, 1863. He probably died in the Civil War, but I'm still counting him as possible because I'm a nice guy. Next, Obadiah, who's J. And I got K, L, and M, and that's it. So we can see our pickings are getting slim. So this man was born in 1842. <laughs> Massachusetts. He looks like he's a New Hampshire man. But since he's still living there, reaching 1870, we can eliminate him. Son of a Daniel and a Hannah. Still there. Gone. Okay, then we got number K, which is a sole record in Pennsylvania. Black man. He could be the same Obadiah as the one that was in Camden, New Jersey. In 1850, but he, but they would have had to completely have got his name, his age wrong. Uh, he's living in Philadelphia. Disappears after 1860. I've eliminated because he's a, the wrong race, and I, I I ended up doing that for the other ones. He's just you know, African Americans is not who Aruba Dye Johnson was. This one. Uh, I don't recall whether I have them. He goes in the Civil War. He's the son of a David. He's living in Sullivan, New Hampshire. Age seven. He would have been about 63, 29, 29 was his birth date. So that's way off. I don't know if this is the same guy. Probably not. By 1900, he's still living in Sullivan, New Hampshire. Age 57. Wife Elizabeth. <clears throat> now, that's a pretty big leap, I, I do admit. Is the same age, but this 1900 Obadiah is not ours because I found records for him. This one would have had to have left, um, <clears throat> you know, not not been counted in the 1860 census. And 
claim Tennessee instead of New Hampshire for reasons unknown. Last one is this person would have been seven years old. He only appears in the 1860 census when he got married, so I doubt that's him. In fact, I know it's not him. No man gets married at age of seven. Okay, so let's review the ones that were possible. That's what I have in this tiny little spreadsheet here. I got them as not impossible Obadiahs. Um, and there's only four that are so far from being likely that I count them as not even worth talking about. Take a look at them getting this. It's probably isn't going to come out too well. What the lines, uh, the, the, the individuals above the line. Numbers one, three, six, and nine. I went over earlier. Um, they have age that they would have been married as being anywhere between forty and fifty-seven, and a death age of ninety-one. Um, I admit that number nine there, the man that was in South Carolina that disappeared, that I thought was Canadian, is more likely than the top three. But I'd say he's middle range. Then we have a man that was born in the right year, but out of Genesee, New York. But he would have died at 84, married at 33. It's about the same thing Arobadiah did, so it's not impossible. But if I say that Arobadiah came out of Maury, Tennessee, and went to Ballard, Kentucky, or went to Missouri, but I think I found the right guy from Missouri. I think he was just there a short while and went back. Um, then I think I have the right set. And then for Pennsylvania, he's just a bit too old. We got Brooklyn, we got Pennsylvania again, we got New Hampshire. None of these even smell like rem or remotely close to what Obadiah is telling his um, census takers. But uh, this combination of the Maury, Tennessee, and the Ballard County, Tennessee census records works. And so that's why I've concluded that um, it's also very possible that our notice on most of these I have. And again, just review, how have, I, how have I got these down to a list of not impossible Obadiah Johnsons? Well, those four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sets are the only ones that don't have absolutely, you know, or at least reasonably clean explanations as to how the individual got from 1850 to 1870, and therefore explained as not being our Obadiah. Um, these these are unexplained Obadiahs, but still possible Obadiahs, and at various degrees of possibility. And above that black line, close to impossible. Below that line, very close to, to possible, uh, or within range of being you know close to possible. But the only one that even is close, the only two that are even close, even. Or as far as age are concerned, is the Genesee County, New York, and the uh, the Maury, Tennessee combination with Ballard County, and or Missouri, and uh, but Ballard County makes more sense. The shepherds were there by 1860, so that's you know that's a more reasonable interaction to expect than Jackson, Missouri, I think. Um, and I gotta look where Ballard is, but I think Ballard is the neighboring county from McCracken. So that makes sense that he would have traveled from Maury, Tennessee to Ballard. Uh, New York is just is really a stretch of facts, and the only one that really works is that set there. So it works actually better than the Thomas Johnson that has plenty of other residents in McCracken County to explain the other residents that are listed in the 1840 census that. Uh, the check mark may have been put in the wrong column or the wrong amount. But to review, it's, again, it's still possible. Again, there's one male listed as being age 10 through 14. And out of the list of, of Johnsons in McCracken County that were male, at least on their surface, I don't see uh, one that would fit in the 1826 through 30 category. So that's an argument for Thomas Johnson. So what I'm saying is, is that it's not impossible it was Thomas Johnson. There are some indicators. But they're not clean. But those indicators have 
little to nothing to do with Obadiah Johnson's life as to what he, uh, the life he said that he had when he reported to, to, to census takers, and that includes him coming from Tennessee. Um, being most important. His age, he might have had a motive to up his age to impress Mr. Shepard so he'd get that little plot of land. <laughs> so stuck with it. They eventually divorced, and there may be also a reason why his death certificate is sparse, but I'm relying on his own uh, census records when he always claims Tennessee is his birthplace. And if that's, that's the case, um, of all the Obadiahs that show up, um, this was the only route he could have taken. Now, is it possible that Obadiah could have bowed out of both the 1850 and 1860 census, or not have been counted both the 1850 and 1860 census, even though his father and all his siblings were, if it is indeed that Thomas? It's possible. Is it possible he moved out and was living alone for two censuses and not with his father? even though um, uh, Anne was not counted in the same, you know, for this to be true, for him to be the son of Thomas, he would have to, one, not be counted both the 1850 and 60 census, but lived in McCracken County, even though his dad was counted. And two, um, as is the evidence shows us, that Thomas Johnson was in, had one daughter that was born in Tennessee, or at least said that she was born in Tennessee. Uh, so he was in there just the right time to come back. Um, doesn't seem very likely. And none of these other Johnsons are buried with this Obadiah. And what it really seems to me is, is that uh, looking, okay, looking at the land records is another set of factors that, that weighs into play. Again, Thomas Shepard had only daughters. And at the end of the day, by virtue of individuals having some relationship with Thomas Shepard's daughters, wh whether it by marriage or by being a descendant <coughs> or a descendant who, or some that married a descendant of, of, uh, of Thomas Shepard, they ended up being buried at the Shepherd, or <laughs> the, one, or the Johnson Cemetery there at Paducah, McCracken County. Um, that that kind of shows the the Shepherds were more established than Obadiah at that time. But, but contrary to the events, Thomas was was already established. They'd been in the county since 1840. So why wasn't this Obadiah established? If indeed that Thomas was his father, um, I think that's that's it. Now, if that Thomas was his brother, um, that they're showing as his dad, I, I don't think so. Um, there was there was an earlier Thomas, I guess that that eighteen forty census Thomas. Um, I have to look at the 1850 Thomas to see if he actually could have been a son on that 1840 census. And if he could have, in fact, that might be the 1826-30 Thomas that I'm looking for, um, but I doubt it. If I get back, I'm probably not going to be able to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that's near the same down. There's a whole lot of Johnsons in the state, so you can't say that even though he's in the county, it's the same Johnson. This is the one they're saying is the father of 1798. No, he. And this is the same man that was the head of household in 1740. So that's that's not an explanation. Um, the only indication we have is this 25 year old daughter here. She says she was born in Tennessee, so that would place. Uh, Thomas Johnson in maybe the 1830 census in Maury County, Tennessee. That would show a relationship between these two families, but that that's it. Um, so I'm done. So what I'm saying is, is I believe that Obadiah Johnson 
is the son of a Robert and Lucinda Johnson, who were residents of Maury County, Tennessee. Um, first and foremost, but I'm not discounting the idea that he was the son of the Thomas Johnson and the McCracken. One thing I do know is that I myself have not seen enough evidence to say that he, I haven't seen enough evidence to decisively say he was the son of Thomas Johnson. Um, I do have a theory and evidence to back that theory up that I would like more support for to say that he was the son of Robert and Lucinda. In either case, if I get the parent wrong, and then if I continue to go back, all well, that's a waste of time because, you know, again, parentage is if, uh, the primary assertion in genealogy is parentage. And if you get one parent wrong, you're going to be materially incorrect all the way back as far as you go. Okay, so I'm done with my presentation, and um, so I'm just opening up this possibility uh, to people, the Johnsons of McCracken, that, you know, uh, they are, they could be, and to me, it seems like all India, it's, I have better evidence that, that he's the son of Robert and Lucinda Johnson than I do of, of, um, of Thomas at all. Uh, I have just some illusionary, you know, Cook, cook goose over here is that this Gooch family, uh, you know, or uh, in fact that may even been one that I explained away as being in Owen County, if I remember right. Um, yes, so there may be just been more one, and that Thomas may have been in, in Tennessee for a little bit, but it doesn't mean that he was the father of Obadiah, and he was there at about the right time. It doesn't mean he's, you know, it's very limited assurance in that case. In this case, I have a record of an Obadiah living with his parents in Tennessee. And in your case, we don't. So I think this is a better assumption to make. And I think that all the records going back further on that the Johnson family tree, unfortunately, their that ancestry could be wrong. <laughs> could be right, but could be wrong. It's just, you know, the way it is. And so I, all I, I guess the only point I'm making is, you know, it's easy to make a mistake. You look at evidence and make a judgment, and if you don't have enough to go on, um, you're just you're not going to get. So I think that see this Thomas here. I may end up with this Robert. I couldn't end up with this Robert Johnson because my Robert Johnson was. Um, with his wife Lucinda was in Missouri. You know what I was talking about with the other point I was going to make. If I see amongst his children a Robert Johnson that's married to Lucinda or another. Anyway, that's not going to work. Um, hmm. They're also in Kentucky too. Hmm. They have some stories, hmm, some pictures. Hmm. So I don't know. Um, this all this could all be wrong. They may or may not actually get caught up to the right Johnson family because there's so many Johnsons out there. Um, and so this this isn't really uh, Johnson McCracken County's history unless they've got more information that I haven't seen. And they've actually proven that this, this Thomas Johnson is his, his father by, by documents in, in, in the McCracken County Library, court records, but certainly not census records. That's not That doesn't prove it. Maybe his will, something else. I, I would like to see it. Um, there's a ton of stories here with, with these. And this guy supposedly went to Kentucky. So this may indeed be the family history of the, the Thomas Johnson that, that made it to Kentucky. The question is, is that Thomas Johnson, the father of Obadiah? And I'm going to say, I don't think so. I think it's this Robert Johnson that was in Tennessee. And um, that being the case, this is, doesn't pertain to the family in McCracken, even though it's a really rich history. It goes back for a very long way. A lot of documentation, a lot of work behind it. It was all for naught. Okay, so I'm going to finish there. That is if I'm right. And if I'm wrong, it wasn't for naught.